So. Now, Mark said that many teachers, or some of the teachers he mm -hmm. runs into, mm -hmm. Uh, kind of shy away. They don't like teaching yeah. math and science. Do you find that as uh, a volunteer? I would have to agree with that. I, I can't speak for math, but for science, I absolutely feel that some teachers can take it on um, and they have the background and the training, uh, but some teachers are overwhelmed and just don't have that that uh, training that's required to to be able to, to really not even just go through the motions and, and provide the experience, but to have the depth to make it interesting. Well, we're talking about basic science, aren't we? We're not talking about advanced science We're in We're not in talking school. about advanced science, but kids ask a lot of questions, and if those are the questions, that's your chance to make it passionate and to connect with those kids. And if you can only answer the questions that are in front of you in the, in the kit that you've opened 10 minutes ago or, you know, two days ago, um, if you don't have a, a little bit of an extra amount of training or some, some expert to, to draw from, then you're at a disadvantage. And, the other thing that I think the teachers are, are to be fair, really um, uh, sort of overwhelmed by is the, the, uh, the actual prep time. It takes a lot of time to, to prepare for science labs, and I don't know that they are given that time in their day to do the preparation that's required. For well, I, I just think this part of our conversation is somewhat discouraging. <laughs> I mean, if the <laughs> teachers aren't that up to speed in terms of uh, math and science mm -hmm. and how on earth are students supposed to become interested in it if what they're getting are from mm -hmm. the teachers? Well, one of or the things the I think that, that we need to work on, and we certainly see some discussions in terms of Common Core standards and so on where these things are changing, but um, until recently the model of science was that it was sort of a body of facts that the student needed to learn and uh, memorize. And in fact, that's not how a scientist views science at all. It's a process, and the most important thing to realize is that whatever you think is true today, you'll know isn't true three years from now. It's <laughs> always changing. And the, the, the best thing we can give our students is the ability to deal with change and to actually be able to think like a scientist, whether or not they remember you know, where this particular you know, chemical is in the periodic table or, or whatever the example would be. I, I'll get back to that. Josie, what does it mean for you in terms of thinking like a scientist? It's observation, you know, it's observing the world and then asking questions about what makes that happen or why does this happen. And I want to get back to your uh, question about teachers because I think there are many good science and math teachers and they work very hard and I work with a lot of them. So in the public schools. In the public schools and private schools. So I wanted to just <laughs> say that there are, we, that's my job and passion is to connect with those teachers that really do a terrific job and, and are heroic in what they do. We need to encourage them more and reward them. Yeah, more. we need to we support need to them. And so all the work that we do after school is really trying to support what they do in school, the good work that they do. So let's begin to talk then about the work that you do after school, in school, around school. <laughs> mm. All of the above. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Courtney, the work that you do in school. Well, uh, I'm a volunteer for the, um, the Ravenswood Science Initiative, and, and what that is is a, it's a group of volunteers that has uh, it's been headed up by Elizabeth Scharr. Um, I think it's been a few years now, three or four years. Um, and what we do is we bring um, experts into the classroom and, and volunteers into the classroom so that we can um, give the kids a, a real hands-on experience that is aligned with what they're learning in their lecture um, that week. Um, the, the goal is to provide every middle school student with 10 laboratory day experiences um, in their middle school um, career. Uh, the, the surrounding neighborhoods, uh, Menlo Park, outside of Ravenswood District, those kids get about 100 lab days in their middle school experience, yes. And the ones in Ravenhood, Ravenswood uh, get only 10? Only 10 provided by volunteers at this point with, in conjunction with their teacher, yes. Um, so the, the lab part of the class isn't something that, that just happens. It's, it's, uh, it's not a given that you get a laboratory with your science experience in middle school. It seems like that is an enormous mm -hmm. disparity. And when you talk about uh, students yeah. uh, uh, scoring on the SAT mm -hmm. tests and other tests, yes. how can they possibly score well? 
Exactly. When wow. they're not exposed to it's, the things that other students in more affluent communities have. Yeah, it's not even just the scores that we're witnessing. When you take a close look at it, there's a there's a big problem with um, with students specifically from Ravenswood District dropping out of high school, becoming overwhelmed. And when you take a, a close look at it, it, it it turns out that it's actually their freshman science course that really sets up such a big hurdle that many of them become disengaged at that point and the process starts, the idea of dropping out of school because they, it moves at such a quick pace and they just haven't been prepared. Sure, Mark, I'm sure you have some comments. Well, one of the things that I, that I th think happens is um, we inevitably, because we're measured by the tests and everybody wants to know the test scores and so on, the things that are that um, are on the tests are the things that get more attention. Currently, certainly, up through say eighth grade or so, before you start talking about, you know, advanced placement or something like that, um, science isn't actually on the test. Uh, math is, but again, it's this notion of math that's that's a, more of a rigid, kind of static kind of math. One of the reasons I love some of the toys that I that I brought today is because you can make uh, math more um, more dynamic and more interactive, and I th and I think that's what kids want. They're born in the digital era. They're used to bringing their iPod Touch to school. Maybe it gets taken away at the door, but that's you know in some sense um, some of what they learn stops when they get to the door because school is not the only time and place that you learn. But uh, nowadays you learn everywhere, and uh, we're taking away some of their tools of learning because it doesn't fit into our current model of, of teaching. And that's not to criticize teachers, but really to criticize a system that we've, we've kind of inherited. And it's a system that's very, very good at resisting change. change. You bring in great new ideas, and they, they get some buzz for a while, and they even move the needle a little bit. But there's a tendency to sort of slide back to the kind of the status quo method And is of, that the of doing because it. of the bureaucracy? Well, I think the tests are a big part of it. I, I think we were we were falling behind before No Child Left Behind, but I think it made things worse. I think the data sort of shows that, you know, test scores are actually worse than they were at the beginning of that. And it's because it's so much about the test and so much of the time that the children spend is preparing for the test or taking the test. Um, so, you know, after a couple of weeks we'll come back and we'll, you know, we'll start teaching it. And actually the way people learn, to a very large extent, we have to let them play. We have to let them explore. We have to make it hands-on. We have to make it interactive. Um, and we forget to do those things in the sort of more traditional, and you've heard the phrase sage on the stage sort of model, where, you know, I've got this material to cover. And the, I mean, the very word cover is troublesome, you know. But it's like, if I don't get through this material, they won't be ready for this test. And, and that's, that's part so of it. So a lot so. of it is test driven. Now, you work with programs in various communities. Mm -hmm. um, to make a difference. What's going on uh, in terms of the programs that you're involved with? So I work within workforce development and I am grateful that the Board of Supervisors, the County Board of Supervisors really provide funding and are, are passionate about developing the next future generations of scientists and engineers. And this is the San Mateo County this Board of San, Supervisors. This is San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. And especially I want to give credit to former Supervisor Mark Church and Rose Jacobs Gibson, who were really visionaries in starting this sort of uh, program in 2005. So that was quite a while ago. And so what I, what I do is um, really uh, give out funding in very specific ways that really promote quality after school, out of school programs that give a component of hands-on learning, it's all hands-on, coupled with workforce development skills, so 21st century workforce skills. So those are how do you communicate, how do you design and build as a team, um, critical analysis, you know, presentation skills, how do you present your work after you've found something. Yeah, but I, I would think that goes above and beyond science itself. These are just basic skills, presentation skills, working as a team. But that often um, you may not get those kind of chances. Um, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure there's group work during the school day, but group work in a scientific investigative process 
that's a little bit different where you're learning how to design and program a robot together or you're building a robot for a specific function so different members take on different roles at different times and that's all about how to be a good workforce um, team member and future workforce employee.